Hey, so we're going to talk about pipelining for a second here. Pipelining allows you to pass objects from one commandlet to another very easily without creating a whole bunch of other variables or uh, doing any other of those programming tricks. So let's look at this piece of code right here. We have a variable called potato uh, with the string spud inside of it. And I can, I can do it like this, and this works, works fine, and it outputs spud right here. But I can also pipeline that variable to right host, and it will automatically display that result as an output. So, right host, let's comment out this section. And if I run that, you'll see I get the exact same thing. So pipelining is a way to shorten your code. Um, and it's a means of handling objects and passing them from one commandlet to another. So let me go through some other examples. Uh, we have this simple script right here. What it does is grabs all the child items in the folder ctemp. So it's going to grab all the, the file objects that are in there. And then it pipelines those objects to the for each commandlet. And I'm telling it to write the last write time of each of those items. Uh, you'll see I have a variable here. Variables in PowerShell always start with a dollar sign. It's a uh, dollar sign with an underscore. The dollar sign and the underscore is the current pipelined object. So uh, when, when I pipeline it, um, if I want to continue working with a single instance of an object within that temp folder, so I'm talking about one file within that folder, uh, as it's going through each of those objects, I can pipe it to the for each and then do something with those each of those objects. So in this case, I'm saying uh, for each one of those items in the folder temp, I want you to output to the screen that current items last write time. And you'll see that uh, there's different properties for, for different objects. So if I pipeline um, gets child item c colon backslash temp to the command get member, it's going to come back with all these properties that I can specify by putting a dot after the uh, variable pipeline item. So um, there's note properties, there's uh, methods, which are th ways to manipulate uh, the data within that object. But we have properties here. And as you can see, one of those properties is last write time. So if I put a dot and one of these properties, it'll know that I'm talking about just that one property so I'm telling you I'm telling it to write that one property out so let me run this and you'll see that it'll first grab all of the items in temp then I'm pipelining all of those items to the for each command and it's gonna go through each of those items that it grabbed and it's going to write the last write time of it so there was four items in that folder we can even uh, go look and see what they are. Okay, it's just some CVS text. Not not much, but as you can see, we're writing the last write time. So it's been a while since I've messed with those files. Uh, and that's one way you can use pipelining. Um, what else can we do? Okay, this is this is just a more. Uh, convoluted example we have get process here and once again I'm pipelining everything all the objects from get process which is all these different processes right here and I'm pipelining them to for each once again but now I have some if else statements in here so the first if says if the 
pipeline object. So we're going through them once again, uh, one at a time. Every time you run this for each, it's saying if the current object name has the word Chrome in it, notice I'm using wildcards on either side of the name and I'm using the case insensitive uh, like um, uh, thing here. I forget what these things are called. But I'm identifying that I want to find the word Chrome. And if you find the word Chrome, then I want you to write that object with uh, the foreground color green. So it, it will, based on whatever data it pulls, it's going to color the output differently. So then I have an else if, and I'm saying, well, if you find the word PowerShell anywhere in there, in the name, I want you to write it with the foreground color red. And if, um, if you encounter anything else, just go ahead and write it out. Uh, so there's actually a lot of stuff in there not related to pipelining, but I just wanted to show you something a little more advanced. So you can see we have these processes. Uh, if their name was Chrome, they're colored green. And we have one, the PowerShell ISC, it's colored red. Uh, so there we go. Now I have a, a script from another video that I made that uses lots of pipelines and it's this get process to web, web report and you can see that I'm I'm pipelining uh, after every command here. Uh, so let me just break this down whoops uh, and so we start with get process same thing as before and then we're pipelining it to uh, I'll just leave the we're pipelining it to uh, the where command and the where once again allows us to specify one of these uh, property uh, names so like process name uh, here I'm looking for only the uh, current items were there's a process name called Chrome. So if I delete the rest of this and I run this, you'll see that it only pulls processes with Chrome. Uh, and then you can pipe it even further and you can go to sort object and you can sort it by one of those other properties. So let's do CPU because that's one that's in the example and I'm gonna do it descending. Uh, so when I run this, you'll see that pipelining allows me to pass information or pass objects easily from one commandlet to another uh, to do lots of really cool stuff. So there's a couple of ex examples um, and I am going to upload these to the site so if you want to check them out they'll be there. So thanks for watching.